Hello and welcome to yet another quick tutorial. Today we're going to set up a quick outdoor lighting scene uh, using HDRI maps. Now, um, the, the way we're going to set it up is we're going to try as much as possible to be able to have control over our lights for either day or night. So um, let's quickly jump into it. So uh, to begin with, um, normally I have a quick scene that I I did from the previous camera shake tutorial. And this is where we've gotten to now. It's a quick um, outdoor uh, restaurant, the scene that we were creating for a client. <clears throat> so um, I want to light up this scene, you, giving it the daytime um, setup. And uh, I came up with a pretty uh, simple way to actually do it. And before I jump into it, um, this scene, this setup is going to work really well with uh, cycles. EV, I'll try out a new um, uh, way of doing it so that I can get the renders out quickly and then we would adopt it for EV, the EV render engine. So, um, I have a clean uh, under the shader editor, the world map. We're going to build it from scratch, so we'll be able to uh, have our control from it. Now, um, to begin with, we will need to add up our world outputs. So that will be the first node. So this is what will connect everything else to it. Now. Um, since I don't have any light source in it, when I hit the viewport shading, what we'll get is a completely give it some time to render. Yeah, so there's no light source in the scene, and we're going to build it up from there, and then we would uh, we'll actually see the control we have over it. So um, let me quickly switch back to the viewport shading. And okay, so we're gonna have this. Uh, so um, the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna mix um, two um, nodes in the shader editor: the environment texture node and the sky texture node. So um, the way we we'll do that is we'll add in our mix shader. And we'll place this here. And for this to work, we we'll need our background node. Bring this one also here. We we'll also need our environment. Sorry, environment texture node. Place this over here. And to get control over the, the positioning. And if we want to um, change certain uh, layouts of the lighting source, we will need one our mapping, mapping node, and we will need our texture coordinates node. So, with this uh, lined up, um, what we're going to do is we're going to um, use any uh, HDRI image that will give us correct um, light information to where we want our light source to actually come from. So uh, I downloaded one from uh, Polyhaven, polyhaven.com, uh, very good source for getting um, a free HDRI images. And uh, I'll leave the link also in the description. So if you want to go and check check out the website, you can do so. So um, under my documents, I have a Blender HDRI, and I'm going to use the Cyberterian. And normally, um, I I love to use um, HDRIs don't that don't have too many. You know, objects in the horizon so that way you get a cleaner um, you get much more details from the sky itself like you know when you this is a, a scene that I did for one client but it was uh, for a specific reason but normally if I want to do outdoor scenes I don't want to 
have one that has the horizon with too many um, too many um, objects or too many object like obstructing objects in the scene so that when you are rendering it will start showing these in the scene which normally I don't like to do that so um, always look out for HDRIs that have um, like you no know, clean landscapes not obstructing this is a bit okay but um, I normally tend to prefer these ones that gives you uh, cleaner skies so we're gonna go with um, the Canon 4K outside okay let's go with the Canon and we'll connect this um, but before then let me switch over to the viewport so we'll begin to see how it uh, interacts with the scene Okay, so this is with no light so as we keep connecting we'll connect the background to the first shader and then from the shader to the surface okay so there we have um, our light source We're coming in now to gain control of how we want this to lay out we will need to map out our node to the vector of the environment shader now um, if you see it's taking out most of the, the the color out so to bring it back we bring the texture coordinates to be mapping the object to the vector we have the colors back so the neat thing about this is that um i can change the sky uh, let me quickly switch back to ev that will give it a faster Okay, so we are in EV. We are just using this to help us position the light because uh, cycles will pull out a lot of resources on our computer. So what we're going to do is um, I can rotate in the Z axis and basically have the light source different position. Now, um, I wanted the, the place where I could get the lights, but um, let me try and see if I can see. Okay, I think this is the brighter side of the, the scene. Okay, we'll come back to this. So it's actually, yeah, this part. Okay, um, now for, sorry, I want to use a different uh, HDRI image so I could explain further. Now, the difference between this scene and this is you can actually see the sun and then these two so um, let me pick uh, this one now um, with the Z axis I'm going to rotate I want the light source to actually come from the top of the building okay good so we have this one here now that we have this we'll switch back to our cycles okay so we have our light source in here but um, to really push out a lot more details in this scene, there's one more um, node that we are going to add. As you recall, I said we will add two nodes, the environment texture node and the sky texture node. Now the sky texture node helps uh, bring up more uh, lighting information into the scene so that you can have um, much more control over it. Now, um, to do so, what we're going to do is uh, add in our sky texture. Add in our sky texture node. Now we will connect first the vector node so that whatever uh, information we're pulling to control the location of the environment texture will also affect the sky texture. Now the reason is that the sky texture also comes with its own light information and that could affect the direction of the shadows that we find here. Now this light source is actually affecting the light, the shadows uh, thrown into the scene. Now if I do not control that, watch what happens when I add in the texture node to the shader. Now if you give it a sec. Now you actually see this light source is here, but it's also throwing lights from this direction also. So we're having two sources of um, 
um, I would say the sunlight, which uh, even though it's giving us um, uh, some good light source, but it's actually wrong. You want it to come directly from where the sunlight is actually being, uh, being thrown. So <clears throat> the way to do this is to, to correct this, is to also connect the mapping information from here to also the sky texture. So the way to do that is um, because the sky texture has added its own sun, we will get rid of it. And that gives us access to be able to connect our own, our own, uh, the, uh, our own uh, vector um, mapping to the sky texture. So what happens is that now we are getting oh sorry not this shader we will connect it to the strength sorry yeah sorry yeah it's not connected to the shader it's actually to the strength area so now we can decide to increase um, our altitude, rotation, elevation, but basically without the strength, if you take this out, a lot more of the light goes dark out. This, if you want to achieve uh, this kind of uh, sunset uh, look, you can actually use this setup. So, but for me, I always love to use the sky texture for giving it a bit more boost in the lighting information that is received. So um, with this uh, light setup, you can actually turn this from daytime to nighttime and still control where the light sources would actually come from. So uh, what we can do is, uh, I'm gonna quickly set this up from a night scene, from a day scene, sorry, to a night scene. So, um, let me quickly switch this. I have this, uh, got this also from Polyhaven. Satara Nights, no lamps. Now we'll give it some time. Okay, so we have this as our night scene. But um, for us to get a realistic night setup, I normally would love to go with the, either the Pritham or the Ho Hosek. So let's try the Hosek. And let me switch back to EV so I can control the light source, the direction of the lights. I don't like these trees showing up in here. Okay, so I will turn this all the way. Maybe if I click again, something like this. Okay, I think I like this with the trees. So you see the problem with when you have. Um, HDRI that has too many uh, uh, objects in the horizon area, it begins to show up, which is not realistic. So uh, I think to gain more control, what we can do is maybe on the Z axis, I can introduce uh, about 20 centimeters. Okay, good. So what I've done is I've brought it down. So it's below the, the horizon on the scene. So we actually have more of the light source in here so we can switch back to our cycles so with this setup that we've done we can actually create a day and night scene from uh, this setup and control how the light uh, sources will be so uh, to have this um, really like lit up. We can begin to add our own light sources in the scene. So, um, and want to, I'll go in depth to create a realistic uh, light source within our uh, within our, our scene. So you can actually uh, appreciate the the lighting information that we can get from this. But this is actually a quick tutorial if you want to do a day and night outdoor lighting for your scene but i think uh, for the purpose of this let's switch back to the 
main um, let's switch back to the DC give it some time to render maybe 10 minutes back to Yoshita okay so maybe go back to EV and change the Oh, sorry. Let me switch this back to zero. So we have our lighting source pack. Bingo. So we have this. Now, what I'll do is I'll switch back to cycles. this setup you can actually have more control over how you your scene would light up and um, create some really interesting uh, color um, combinations <clears throat> like color uh, details so um, let me just do a quick render and just to show you what we can achieve with this so here is a quick render of um, our scene and um, we are actually getting the light source from the sun um, rays over here and shows the direction of the shadows also. So whichever directions we also take or rotate the HDRI image, we would get the light to correspond with the directions also. So this is a quick tutorial. Um, in the next video, I'll go in depth with uh, the night scene how to actually add lights when you've set up your hdri so you can get a realistic scene and we're going to use this very uh, setup to do so uh, thank you once again for this uh, video and oh before i go um there's only one caveat to this is that um the hdri really pulls up a lot and this is a 10 minutes a 10 minutes render so um that's the that's the downside to using these kind of setups it's uh, a bit uh um, you know, CPU or GPU intensive when it comes to rendering. So um, I'll catch you in the next video and uh, thank you so much. Bye.